Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whenever you are checking this out and getting ready to share this. Hope you guys can get on in the room. Come on in here. Hello to Jill. <laughs> Jill is number one. So come on in the room. Hey, Janie. Good to see you. How's my sound? Everything good? Must be. We're probably going to wait 30 seconds and I'm going to start right in here. Hi, Michael. So this is video number two, day two, and we're gonna get started in about 20 seconds. Do me a favor and share this, and uh, we'll be started in about 10 seconds now. We're talking about how to start a house church. Great, great, glad the sound is good. We're gonna be starting, we're gonna be talking about how to start a house church. So. Um, yesterday we talked about a couple of things. Today we're going to talk about some different things just to kind of put you at ease so you, you know and understand what it takes. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about um, how to start a house church with us and what that means and what that includes. Hey, Annette, good to see you. Man, I know a lot of people are busy and uh, busy at home. The internet is packed with people on it. Everybody's doing something, it seems like. If you're not just watching it, you are, uh, you know, doing a stream. So, share this for me. We're getting ready to start. So yesterday we talked about a few things and just to, vi just to recap really quick, the last thing that I talked about yesterday was to pray, make sure that we are praying into this thing and not, not just wanting to do it. This isn't a multi-level marketing, but um, it really requires that we get in here and pray and seek the face of God. House churches are not organizations that require people with administrative skills or an immense giftedness to coordinate or direct a group, okay? Hey Chuck, good to see you. They simply call for ordinary people like you, like me, who are in love with Jesus. Neil Cole, in the book Cultivating a Life for God, believes that simplicity is the key to fulfilling the Great Commission. He says, the more complex the process, the greater the giftedness needed to keep it going. So the goal right here is just to let everybody know, <laughs> you don't have to be all of that to do all of this, right? And that's what's great about it. The really good news is that to start a house church, you can lay down the burdens of planning, planning how to cope with buildings and programs and outreach strategies. You don't have to be an impressive leader, though you probably should have some kind of leadership skills, but you can just get in there and get started with what God has called you to do. So, and that's where we come in. We help, we come alongside you. You, sh you never do anything without somebody else. And so we come alongside you and you basically just start a house church with grabbing your friends, grabbing your neighbors, and you take things one step at a time. Hey, Ms. Harrison, good to see you. So, Yesterday, we kind of learned that in the first step to starting a house church is to pray. House church ministry must be birthed in prayer. If you didn't get anything out of yesterday's video, you should know that it must be birthed in prayer. Though it is a simple step without prayer and God's leading, we invite trouble, right? Anything has to have prayer. Everything needs prayer. Starting a house church cannot be just a good idea. It must be a God idea. And if you feel that you're called to start a house church, 
then you should gather a few like-minded individuals like yourself, people together, put them, bring them together and begin to pray. Simple as that. Just begin to pray, receive a strategy from God and what he's asking you specifically to do and how to do it. And tomorrow I'm going to help people with some of that. But um, it's not hard to just get in there and pray and let God talk to you. Many house churches have false starts that are directly linked to the lack of prayer. Prayer is everything. Amen and amen. Fire, fire, fire. (laughs) So taking time to pray gives God the opportunity to work in our hearts and to purify our motives. When house churches start up because of a reaction to something that we don't like about the established church, the house church's identity is built from rebellion and discord. Healthy house churches, on the contrary, must begin with God's leading and a desire to reach those who don't know Jesus. What a person sows, the Bible also always says, you always will reap what you sow. Therefore, if you begin a house church because because of an offense, because of an offense toward an existing church or an offense toward a leader, you know how we can do you will sow the seeds of fault finding and pride in the church that you are creating. So along with prayer, it is also important to look at the local Christian community's leaders for spiritual guidance and advice as you launch a new church. That would be us. We're here to help you. We're the community of leaders that we are here to help you establish a church in your home. It's awesome. It's an awesome thing. So that's the prayer part and then making sure our motives are right part. That's important. Good to see everybody getting on here. Share this video so that we can help some other people. Um, The second thing I want to talk about is know who you are called to reach. Know who you are called to reach. Uh, It works the same way in a large church as it does in house church. You need to know who you are called to. That's very important. And that's my biggest suggestion. You know, everybody's not called to reach um, everybody. You are called to reach somebody. And that's where we have to be very focused and prioritize who you are called to reach. Uh, I understand that we are called to reach unbelievers, but but we're, we're talking a little bit more than just the fact of a broad term of saying, I'm called to reach the loss. We're talking about who you're called to reach, even the demographic of people who you're called to reach. For instance, in our house church, we don't have kids and we've had kids. But in the summertime, it's great to have kids over here because we've got kids all around us. But during the school year, it's harder and more, a little more difficult to have kids. But our house church in Pittsburgh, they have kids. They're a family of young children. And so when, when they have house church, then they invite families that have kids. It's easy. Our house church that does not have kids, it would be a little bit more cumbersome. We would try to have to, we don't even have toys around here. So we don't, here's the thing. <laughs> you don't have to be what you are not. So you have to ask God, who am I called to based on a lot about who you are? So you don't have to come up with a different structure to accommodate people when you don't have the facilities for that structure. And so and that's what's great about house church in a in a church with a building and all of that kind of stuff. A lot of times we're trying to look to figure out how to get people involved, how to get families involved. When we have kids here, we have the kids involved in regular stuff that's going on. They're involved in the worship. They're involved in the word. That's the exactly. That's the beauty of house church. So you're not pressuring yourself to try to come up with something and to be something that you're not in order to attract 
a crowd. You're not trying to attract a crowd. You're trying to attract the people that you are called to. And that's what's great. So the one in Pittsburgh, they invite kids, uh, families that have small children. It's beautiful. We have a brand new house church starting in the uh, area, Texas area. They have teenagers. So the people that will come to that particular house, they're going to come in there and it's going to be teenagers. Another great thing, which is why we have more than one house church, even having multiple house churches in the same area. This means that some will have small children. Some will have no children. Some will have singles. Some will have, you know, teenagers college age people, but you can't have everybody in your house. And so you don't need to try to have everybody in your house. Blessing man of God. Good to see you guys on here. We have some pastors on here and that's awesome. So it's really important that you know who you're called to and that you just don't do a cattle call for your house church. Okay. Very important. Even if you have a church and it's in a building, know who you're called to. The goal is not to reach everybody. The goal is to reach somebody. Even Jesus said, I'm going after the one. I'm going after the one. So let's go to the next thing. The size of the house church matters. The size of your house church matters. You know, I know we do church and we do church in big buildings, right? But uh, we can't reach everybody effectively in a big building building where you have hundreds and thousands of people. We can't reach them effectively. And so we try to come up with programs in order that we can break these big numbers in down into small numbers so that we can reach them, teach them and send them and equip them. In house church, you don't have to do that. You're already small in number. And so the goal is not to increase in a bunch of numbers. The goal is to grow vertically, grow the person inside. Okay. So we do that by keeping small numbers. God told us in the very beginning, when you get to a certain number that you should, you know, branch off to the next house church. And so when we, when we see ourselves getting too big on a consistent level, then the goal is to launch another house church. All right. So when you get to above six to 12 people, you're going to get, you're going to find you're not able to minister effectively to your group and you want to know your group. The goal guys is not to have, as we talked about, the goal is not to have 30 people in your house so that then you can go and get a building and become an established church in a building. That's, that's not what we're doing. We're not trying to do that for that reason. We are trying to build people in individual homes, inviting the Obed Edom anointing into our homes. And then we grow this way. So we grow by bringing other house churches into being up under our umbrella. It's a great thing. It is wise to keep the number of people to between six and 12. And from our experience, groups less than six strong to their, they, they strong, they tend to dwindle and be lackluster if it's less than that, if it's less than six. So because of the decreased number of relationship and interactions, you, you, you want to have more than six. It just helps so that people don't feel like you're just focused on them when it's just the two of y'all, right? So however, groups over 12, though, tend to lose intimacy. Intimacy is important when you have a house church where every member is participating. It's important. It, It is perhaps not surprising then that rapid church planting movements today reproduce small house church numbering between 10 and 30 people because they're trying to create that intimacy that you lose when you have a bigger church. And so we're still a church. We just operate as a small church so that we can have the intimacy. I remember being in church 
And uh, like I told you, it's, it's been, you know, I've been in church all my life as a PK. But the, man, even working in the church, there's many times I've been in church and didn't say hello to 10 people, to 10 people. And you can have, I mean, I was in a church of, you know, a few thousand people every time we had service. And so to think that you could have intimate fellowship with all those people is very difficult. And you end up missing people. You end up walking past people week after week, service after service. And that turns into year after year where you don't really know the people. And then you begin to know people based on what they can do for the organization. And that is not the reason that we have church. We don't have church so that we can find out how we can use people. We have church so that we can find out how we can grow people. And when we grow people, they figure out and they come to realize what they are called to do. And then you're able to send them out, whether they are starting another house church or whether they are doing something outside where they are, you know, they, they it could be many different things that we are called to do. And so sometimes we're not able to find out what we're called to do because we're only giving people things to do because our ministries need somebody to do something in because we're so big. When we have house church, it's small enough where we're able to be intimate with one another and help each other to grow and to achieve our destiny. And that's a good goal. And that is godly. Right. It's always godly. So it's important that we keep ourselves in a in a tight knit group. And it's not a click, guys. It's this, we're not saying we're a click. We're saying we're a tight knit group of a certain number of people so that we can be intimate with one another. And then as we grow, as you if you want to call it a click, go ahead, right ahead. But as we grow, then we expand laterally and we invite a leader to start another house church. Got to keep going. Let's talk about frequency of meeting, because that's important too. How often should you meet if you start a house church? So house churches should meet at least once a week, at least once a week to maintain a sense of connectedness. Again, though, we must emphasize the importance of flexibility because some micro churches, house churches meet at the same location every week, while others can move to a meeting place by rotating or and go to someone else's house. They may take turns in whose house they go to. Some groups meet more frequently, others less often. Some house churches meet during the week, others on the weekend. It is crucial that meeting together is an expression of the members desire to build community together and not just a religious duty. I hope you get that, that you understand house church is about we want to be together, not just the fact that we feel like we have to meet our religious duty of coming together. And I went to church today. I did my duty as a good little Christian. That day is over and it's really over. That is building our lives on a sand concept instead of a rock concept. Building for relationship is our goal. And so house church is about doing that. We build for relationship with others and building for relationship with our father. And if we're not doing that, which is the things that we have done a lot of times in, you know, in the established church where we forget some things because we have the uh, uh, the thing around us, that machine that we got to keep that machine going. That's that's hard to do, guys. It's hard to keep that machine going. And so you never want to create something that you can't maintain. And that's why it's great to have house church so that you can maintain the goals, the original goals which is what God has already laid out for us. I was up this morning and I was talking to the father about, um, about this very thing, how we can build on the sand or we can build on the rock. And the times that we're in right now with all of this stuff that's going on that everybody's aware of, we have to ask ourselves how we built. Did we build on the sand or did we build 
on the rock because we have one storm that we need to be focused on. Just like Noah, he had one storm that he had to build for. One storm, a storm he had never seen before. One storm that was going to take everything out. He had to build based on the instruction and the plan of God. And so the church needs to really look at, the established church needs to really look at how we have built because the storm is here and we have to really look and see how we're standing if we built on the sand or we have built on the rock back to the frequency of meeting is important so it's crucial that you understand whether how you meet but here's the here's the great thing about house church um we started a house church in pittsburgh and they were just meeting on the fourth friday just the fourth friday of the month and then they began to meet with us on the uh, second and the fourth Friday. And we came in through YouTube and we did live YouTube worship. And we could talk more about that tomorrow, but that's how they met. And so they only met on Friday. That's the great thing about this is that you're not restricted to your religious thing, which is I have to meet God on Sunday and I gotta meet with God on Wednesday. Okay, no, that is not, that's not, what we have to do. Actually, I try to meet with God every day and then I want to have community with other people. That's awesome. Having community with other people and not trying to fulfill a religious duty. We got to get away from that, all that religious stuff and get into relationship with people and relationship with our father. All right. So let's talk about um, where you meet at. I know we call it house church. Some people call it micro church. Some people call it small groups. Um, when we talk about house church, it's not just because it's in a house, but yes, it could be in your house. It could be in your apartment. It could be that you guys go and sit around in a restaurant like Panera Bread and you sit around the table and you have a Bible study and drink some coffee. That is church. That is church. That is church. I like that, babe. You said the house church creates a place for his habitation in our homes. That's one of the reasons why we're doing this uh, over these next three days is because we want to invite you to create a habitation for the father in your home, an altar in your home. God can be in your home just the way he's been in, in your church your established church. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Don't be mad if you got a church. I understand that's great. If you got a church and you got the big building and you got to meet the bills and the needs, I ain't mad at you. Don't be mad at me. We, we ain't no love lost. I, I love you. I understand that. I'm just presenting an idea that God has given us and that has also been used you know, around the world where you don't have to deal with all that and you're able to have relationship with people, grow people, and you don't have all that overhead going on. All right. So you can meet anywhere and you can have church where two or more gathered. You can you can have him in the midst, you know, but it's better when you have a little bit more than two. OK, so how does house church work? Um, one of the things that we do is we come together and we eat. All right. So. Eating is a great thing because we all like to eat. We all like to eat. Amen, Pastor. It is great. So we all like to eat. What, what, eating, what eating does, it's not just the fact that they broke bread together, you know, had communion together. It's not just the fact that you're filling your face. It's the fellowship that comes out of sharing and breaking bread together that is important. So when we come together, everybody brings a dish. And, you know, I'm a stickler for cleanliness in that sense, no matter what my wife says. I'm a stickler for cleanliness. And so, you know, make the meal in a clean kitchen and then bring it to our house and we will share and break bread together. We have a host house and that host house doesn't have to make all the food. Everybody brings a dish to the to the table. And it's just great because there's nothing more intimate than 
than uh, eating with someone. I don't know how many of you have ever ate with your pastor. Salah. But there's nothing like breaking bread together with your pastor, your pastor's wife, kids, however that thing is set up. And you're there right there in the midst of it. There aren't any armor bearers around. <laughs> none of that, none of that churchy, none of that churchy stuff is going on. It's like we are here and we are having a good time and we are in community. We are sharing lives together. It, I, so that's what the eating part does. It brings all the barriers down that people have and all of those preconceived notions that people have. That's just by the fact that we're eating in the same rooms. It's, I don't, I don't know how to explain it to you, but I, I would tell you this, if your pastor invited you out to eat, you, you would be thrilled. You would be like, oh my gosh, pastor invited me out to eat. Heck yeah, I'm going. And you would be like, ah, you know, I ate with the pastor. House Church takes all that stuff down and gives you the opportunity to have community one with another. It's, it's an awesome thing. So eating is a big part of it. And then uh, the next thing that we do is we try to have, uh, we not try, but we do. We have worship and we have a time of teaching. Now, when God told us to start our church house, and this whole organization part of it, he told us these two things, which is there's a time for him and there's a time for them. Him is him. There's a time where we give God everything and we make that time on Sunday. Okay. So Sundays are about him. It's not about a bunch of announcements. It's not about um, a bunch of programs. It's not about folks being seen. It is about we are going to maximize our intimacy with him, not each other, but with him. And we come together in community to glorify him and to uh, allow his manifest presence to be in the room. I'm going to talk more about that tomorrow. But that is our goal is to just get in here and love on him. Now, I know how it goes in uh, the established church where we get in to the sanctuary and it's not all about him. It's about us every time we get together. The worship team has to sing songs that, you know, make us happy so that us will, you know, be happy enough to receive the word that we think is for us You know, all this us stuff. And so, we get away from us on Sunday and we allow God to speak to us. We allow ourselves to worship him and do that without time constraint and without, you know, let's do this. Got to do that. No, no. We make ourselves give him what he is due and what he is worthy of. Once we do that, then we go into into the scriptures and we just pull that out. What is God saying to us today? Which is so important, right? It's very important. All right. Uh, I don't want to mess this up. Let me make sure. All right. So once we move to that, we've, we've had service. You know, service is about worship service, which is spirit and truth. We have the spirit. We have the truth. Sometimes if we don't get to the word, it's because the word is in the music. And so we make sure that we do it all spirit and truth. If we, if it just happens all that way. And then, the, then the next day that we come together is our life application day, which is about them. So we have a day that's about him. And then we have a day that's about them and them is all of us. Okay. So when you get a prophetic word, you get a word, you get some teaching, you need to know how to live that, walk that life out so that you know how to live. So we, we do that on the other day, whatever day that is that we, 
that you choose for us. It's on Tuesday where we learn how to what that means, how to walk that out, ask ourselves some hard questions so that we can develop some good answers and then begin to apply that to our lives. That's growing. That's how we grow. We grow this way. I'm going this way. We grow this way and not try to get a bunch of folks up in our house. We try to get a bunch of word up in this house right here. Sorry if I tapped the mic, but the goal is to grow and to grow our ground, to grow our hearts, to grow in spirit and in truth. So that's our goal to come together to eat and then to come together and to worship and to hear a word. And then the third thing that becomes a priority is that we uh, we just meet after our meeting, which is uh, people don't want to go home and it's in my house. It, it will be in your house, wherever it is you're meeting. Folks don't want to go home because they just love being together. And we like that. We love that. I know how to kick people out, but I don't want to kick them out. I want to have community. It's not like we're getting ready to eat again, but the food that's left over, folks may go back and eat some more and have that. Drink some more water, coffee. I don't know. All of that. We just like to talk. And then, you know, sometimes the presence of the Lord has been so good for us. We just talk about it and it's honest. And that's what's wonderful about it is that it's just honest community and nobody's rushing unless they got something they got to do. You know, it's only 10 or 12 people in your house. And so that's what's it's just wonderful. I'm telling you, um, nothing like it. But those are the three priorities, eating and then coming together and meeting. And then we uh, on the other day, we have a life application. But in that same time, you're right. They're doing life together is uh, we just spend time in community and there's nothing false about it. There's nothing religious about it. Um, there's no stress, stress about it from the member part of it and from the worker part of it. Uh, me being both of those people, I have found there is no stress. There's no stress, whether I'm coming up with a word from the Lord. He gives me the word. He fills my mouth and I deliver that. There's no stress in trying to figure out uh, what we're going to sing. Amen, Matt. God is definitely raising up house churches in these times. Uh, we just want to do it right, right? And so when, when we come together, I'm not stressing about what we're singing and what we're going to be speaking about because we just want to repeat, echo what heaven is saying. And that's awesome. I don't have to sing everybody's top 10 and all that kind of stuff. All I have to do is hear what God is saying and then put that down here in the room. I love it. I love it. Here's the last thing I'm going to talk about. Because tomorrow we're going to talk about money, how that works, taxes, how that works. We're going to talk about structure tomorrow and how the structure is and how we build with the structure. So before we go, I want to just talk about this last part, which is um, mission and vision, because I told you we would just spend about 30 minutes together. All right. So I'm running my mouth a little bit. It's important that we know our mission. Now, earlier I talked about knowing who you are called to and who you're supposed to reach. That's very important. Hopefully, hopefully we understand that. This last part is about the mission for your house church. So each house church quickly develops its own personality, right? And some house churches have a knack for helping marriages become healthy while others are geared towards and led by teens. And still others are good at helping members with practical day-to-day -day needs. You know, there are house churches that just go out and they come together and they go out in the neighborhood and they help the elderly or they help the widows. That is church. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Everybody, we're members in particular in this body. And so some people do this, some people do that. So every house church or network should uncover its own vision and mission. You should know why you exist. 
We help you with that. We're going to talk about that tomorrow, too. We help you with all of that. But um, uh, you should know who you are, why you exist, so that you don't do the wrong thing and you always are doing the will of the Father for your house church. Okay? It's important because it is built around your personality. Um, this house church and the house churches that we are having under us are built around my personality and my personality as a worshiper. We are presence driven. And so we're releasing house churches in neighborhoods that are presence driven, that love his presence. OK. And so it is built around my personality. It would build. And when you have your individual um, house church, even under our structure, it's going to have your personality completely involved in what you're doing. It should reflect that people are going to come to like you and become and come to love you because you're showing who you are, a person of integrity, a person that loves this, that loves that. They're going to get to know you for who you are. And so that's a great thing. You have to have a vision and a mission for your house church. You may be the kind of person that is big on restoration, which we are in that too. You know, uh, yeah, my wife said a good thing, which is no mask, you know, in a house church. Everybody takes the mask off, which is important to know. But you got to know what you who you are. So you do the right thing. You may be a house church that wants to, you know, raise children up. And that's part of that vision. You want to be a house church that reaches out to those who are um, uh, uh, widows or uh, the the disenfranchised or people that have been um, on drugs and, and deal with that because you can't deal with it all. OK, you should know that you can't deal with it all in one house church. That's why you have multiple house churches that are reaching the world by reaching someone in each of those house churches. Yes, real intimacy, Pastor, with God and with people. You know, if we could do it all over again, I would have done house church um, when I was 21, you know, getting ready to go to, you know, one of the fastest growing churches in America at that time. Instead of doing that, I, I might have just done this, you know, if I was smart enough. <laughs> but I'm, I'm smart enough now. I'm smart enough now to know uh, what God's will is for my life. And that happened because of prayer. And so we have to always go back to prayer, guys, which is uh, the way we know how to enter a thing. And then when we have entered that thing, we just keep on praying so we know how to maintain what God has given us. Right. All right. So, hey, if you got any questions, uh, put that in there. I'll answer them if I can. And if you don't put it in there and I'll answer it later. Tomorrow is going to be a great time where we get together and talk about our structure. I talked about it a little bit. I want you to know what God has said to us. And if you want to be a part of what we're doing, I'm going to I'm going to put that ask out there and see if you want to be a part of what we're doing. Remember that we're not asking you to uh, leave the established church. We're just asking you to start community and uh, let that community grow. All right. We love the established church church. You know that we don't have issues. We're not offended. We're not trying to do something because we are offended and neither are you. So we always check our hearts and we, we even fellowship with the established church just because it helps to, you know, make sure your heart is right. Make sure you don't feel like you're a lone ranger and you're trying out there trying to do things out there on your own. We're covered. We're we're ordained. And I'm going to talk about that and how all that works and happens. And um, it's going to be a good time tomorrow. So you definitely want to get on with me at five o'clock tomorrow. Uh, what are your thoughts on leading a home church and being part of an established church? Thanks, Matt. <laughs> That's exactly what I was just talking about is because uh, really the established church has been doing that in some form or fashion where they have had the establishment and they felt the need 
to reach out to their people because their people needed more than what they were getting on a Sunday morning or Wednesday night. And so they've been establishing these small groups. And I've, you know, I've seen churches that have had 1,200 people, 2,400 people, 3,000 people have 60 small groups or so that they have uh, just around their city that help to meet the needs of the people, help to meet the needs of the congregation. And so now uh, you can have a small uh, group, a house church, and still be part of a church house, house church. You just want to maybe schedule it on another day so you don't wear yourself out. That's all. It's not, it's not a big deal. Um, any other questions? Put that in there. I'll be happy to answer it. But uh, there's a lot of good comments on here from people that are in our house church and other people that understand how house church works. It is very intimate and it's, and it's just really awesome. It's, intimacy is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It is, it is not a bad thing. Yes, pastor, we can, you, you can do both. Um, I think you'll find out when you do do both that there is a lot of good in, uh, in the house church that will enhance what happens in the established church. Uh, let me see what my wife says. Will you be talking about this tomorrow, how we are networking house churches who are also plugged in? Yes, I will be. Matt said, see you tomorrow. Love the intimacy. Love you guys. It's going to be great. God's doing something. We, all, we, we know that. We know that God is doing something in not just the nation, but in the world. Uh, I'm really thinking about giving you this word that I received this morning, but uh, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow it's going to be at 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. And I'll get on there and I'll probably start with this word that I received uh, this morning concerning the body of Christ and um, uh, what that what that is. I'll do that tomorrow. All right. God bless you guys. See you tomorrow. 5 p.m. Blessings.